Hey everybody, I'm Jason. I'm joined by Caleb, Paul, and Joshua. Uh, um, Joshua. <laughs> Joshua. That's my uh, wrestling name, guys. Yep. Oh my Josh. And uh, uh, welcome oh to Shootcast. Josh. So we're just going to start off by talking about All In. Because we were talking about it before and then I just interrupted just Caleb and told him to shut up and uh, no talking and we're going to save it for the recording. So we'll, uh, you have the card? Yeah, or? I pulled it up. Okay. Um, I didn't get to see it. I just saw a rundown of it. I know Paul watched. I watched the uh, the Green Arrow match. The Green Arrow match? And when he fought Hawkeye? Yeah. And then, uh, Caleb, you watched the whole show. I missed, I'm trying to see how many matches I missed. I think I missed the first three. But you missed, like, the pre-show stuff, right? I missed the pre-show and the first and the opening match. Isn't it funny, like, how much we they, like, shit WWE gets for their long shows, and then this mm. is a five-hour wrestling show. It didn't feel like it, though. An I indie really... show that was five hours. And at, like, what point does we do we not call it indie? Like, when is this not an indie? When you get 10,000 people to sell out a stadium and... Or, and Ray shows yeah, like, up. What was worried. it, like 30 minutes? 29, 29 minutes? 29 and 36 seconds? Yeah, less than like 30 that. minutes. You get yeah. 10,000 people to go to a show that Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks are hosting. And you're like... And who who owns All In? Who, what's the ownership? The All, All In was like a... Um, All In's like an amalgam. Oh, okay. So Marcus will be here in 10. All right. Well, Marcus will be jumping in soon. Um... So, All In was like an amalgam of things. It was like ROH and New Japan, and but it's like the, isn't it, it was mostly ROH, right? Was it like a Sinclair, because I know Sinclair Broadcasting owns them, or ROH. Yes. They're owned by like a big company. Actually, I don't know if Sinclair owns, I think Sinclair owns uh, Impact. Is it Impact? I think they own no, no. ROH. I don't remember It's either, either one, um, but one of the big, there's a big mind. company. Um, but I don't know if it was, I know it was bankrolled by like Cody and, and all those guys. I mean, they... Yeah, put it up was, a bunch of money and put yeah. the show off. It was ground. basically self-funded by them three. They got other people involved, the friends of theirs who helped them with the booking and the running of the show right. and, ha- and how to make it all happen. But for the most part, it's mostly out of their pocket. They got a couple of sponsors. It's like when you watch it. Right. They, they're clever about their sponsorship in there because like if you watch um, anything about the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes, they love Crackle Barrel. And which, is a re- which is a wrestling thing. And then like there's a nice little um, reference to Crackle Barrel in there. Uh, I love Cracker Barrel. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm so in love with the biscuits and gravy. See, now uh, Josh just became a Young Bucks fan. I did. But, uh, but it was a... Uh, what? So it started off with the um, SoCal Uncensored, uh, which is Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky. Yes, yeah, so they defeated the Briscoes. I mean, it wasn't a title match. The Briscoe is the uh, tag team champions of Ring of Honor right now. And see, that's what I like about these... Uh, sorry, immediately cut you off. But they, no, yeah, that's what I like about these shows is that's like a ton of different titles. You're not just getting, like, just an ROH champion. Like, you have New Japan people there. You have the NWA World Heavyweight title is getting defended. It's a... Uh, um, do they have any from New Japan? Or they just had their yes. champions there? Uh, they had, well, Kenny Omega, Kazucho Okada, former champion. Right. Uh, Marty Scroll was a former junior heavyweight champion. Um, who else was there that, that wrestles? Uh, Koto Bushi is, um, right. is New Japan. Uh, I think that's it on top of my head. There they have been, a lot of people. There might have been some people in the over-the-budget battle royale. Right. But for the most part, it was those like the main people, like the one of the more, more popular people mm-hmm. of New Japan were there. I gotta watch the Briscoes. I hear about them all the time. They're they're fun. Yeah, they've they're been like, around forever. Yeah, every time I hear about them, I just think of Jack and Jerry Briscoe. And no, <laughs> it's, not, it's not even spelled the same. <laughs> it's not even close. Um, but I haven't got to watch them yet. They're they're, they're wild. They're crazy characters. So yeah. the so Cell Kyle and Sensor defeated them. And then you had Flip Gordon won the nineteen man over budget battle royal. So yeah, I know <laughs> a little awesome. I know a little more about this. <laughs> I didn't watch it, but um, leading into all in, like yeah, they kept on letting people post and saying I'm all in. Mm-hmm. And so they did this like six month storyline with uh, book flip for all in. Mm-hmm. And he just couldn't get booked. He kept on having matches, he had a chance to beat Cody Rose to get in, he had a chance to win the W N W A title to get into all in. Mm-hmm. And he kept failing to get into uh, to get booked for all in. Until um, this match, he came out as a Chico El Luchador, and uh, Bully Ray beat him up, 
and like threw him outside the ring, and so like people forgot about him throughout the match. And uh, Bully Ray was great in this match, from what I hear, that he he kept he was the heel, um, and it got down to him and Colt Cabana. And you, of course, people were wanting Colt to win because it was in Chicago, which is insane that Colt Cabana is in it. Yeah. But uh, but Bully Ray ended up beating Colt Cabana, and he thought he won. And then here comes El Chicador come in there, and he like super kicks Bully Ray and uh, takes his mask off, and it's flip, and, and he ends up winning. And, and books uh, when he, by winning this match, he got a he gets a ROH title match later in the night against Jay Lethal, okay. which I think you would like that match because it was. Yeah. Yeah, it, it sounds like something I, I like, and I like that. I like that they're. I haven't been paying a lot of attention to anything. Mm-hmm. I, I I've just been working a lot lately, getting the channel and all that kind of stuff. But I like that they're continuing with the bully being the heel. He is one of my favorite heels outside of like WWE because he's just perfect at it. He's a prick. Yeah. Oh, he, <laughs> he, he looks he, like he a play, prick. He plays that New York asshole to a point and he does it awesomely oh yeah no yeah, that's the oh. it, i love that his yeah. name is bully right now like it's just so it it's so fitting the beauty of it like he just retired as like a baby face and gave this great retirement speech and he just comes back and he doesn't actually retire now he's picking on people and just being this asshole yeah no like <laughs> indie guys you know he's oh, yeah. just like oh little indie guy i just beat the shit out of you and it's good for both of them because he puts them over, and then they, you know, they get their win. Because um, he was the he won the TNA title, right? Yeah, he was. I don't know if he won it more than once, but but he was up there. I know he had a he I was one of their main I adventures. I said I always wanted to see Bully versus Rey Mysterio in a match, and I thought that would always be pretty cool. Bully Ray as the heel. I can't imagine they the didn't face. wrestle already. Well, they've wrestled. Not, oh, you want to see like Bully Ray? I want to see Bully Ray oh, versus okay. Rey Mysterio because it's a completely different. Like move set, he's so much more violent. Well, yeah, because he's older, so he just it's like Kurt Angle now. versus Kurt Angle with the mouth guard. Yeah, you gotta see this. Um, so hair angle versus no hair yeah. angle. So we'll continue with this one. So we next match was Matt Cross against Maxwell Jacob Friedman. I am not familiar with either of those guys. You know, Matt Cross. I don't know anything about uh, Matt Cross. I think one of them is um, Son of Havoc. I can't remember which one. Son of Havoc is a as a mass wrestler. Oh, yeah, it's a uh, Matt Matt Cross. Okay. Yep. He um uh, he's a really good wrestler. He's a <gasps> Holy lot of fun. Holy shit! It's M Dog Twenty. What? M Dog Twenty. Wow. Okay, so M Dog Twenty is like one of the original like backyarder slash indie guys that I ever heard of. Like before mm. YouTube was a thing, when you can only really find, um, like he's in a. Uh, wrestling. He's in Backyard Wrestling, the, the, game. the mm-hmm. ICP game. He's in that. He's the one that yeah. did the uh, in JCW. He in went too. to go do like a moonsault to the outside, and he broke the middle rope, and it was broken for like the whole show. Um, that does not look like him at all. That's insane that that's him. Like if you if you look up, you should look up uh, M Dog Twenty when you get a chance. Everybody look him up. He was on Tough Enough too. He's on one of the Holy Stone Cold. Fuck! It's M Dog Twenty. <laughs> I didn't know he was around that long. He's, he's, he's been around. Wow, thanks. But uh, he's <laughs> <laughs> old joke. Yeah, he's been. Uh, no, he was. We watched him in the early two thousands. Yeah, like the very early two oh, thousands. He looks young, man. Right. Yo, he was like a. Uh, he's got to be like our age, or maybe probably. he's probably between. Because how old are you? You're like twenty. I'll be twenty five in two Oh, okay. Months. Yeah, so he's got to be like thirty, I would think. But when he wrestled, he was like such a baby face, and he did not look. And he wore like. Shoes and like track pants, and that was his give, That was his deal. Like it was so backyarder early two thousands wrestling. Um, that's awesome. He beat a guy named Maxwell Jacob Friedman, which I can't look up because they don't have any information on him on Wikipedia. He does not have a Wikipedia page. He doesn't. Oh, the guy Maxwell Jacob. I think he. Um, I think he had like some connection with the Young Bucks. I could be wrong. Could be confusing him with somebody in the world in the battle royale nice. but someone on the show was like with one of the jacksons like really close friends like coming up in the wrestling business oh, okay and they like let him wrestle i um the next match i haven't got to see but i really want to um just because it's got my favorite like indie guy and it's um christopher daniels with kazarian versus um steven amell which i did not know about until i heard about the show um this like a few was days ago. 
this was Steven's third match ever. He uh, he had a tag match with uh, with Neville or on the Indies Pac. Um, he was they were tag team partners against Stardust and Wade Barrett, mm -hmm. and that was at SummerSlam like three years ago. So that was his first match, and then he had another match. And then actually, that match he did really well with, mm -hmm. like for being your first match on a big stage. You could tell he had a little bit of hesitation, mm -hmm. but it was actually a really good match. I mean, this he was still he had um, a lot of. I would imagine it was he was probably pretty much as good then as he is now. In three well, matches, you're not going to. Oh, well, you also have Christopher Daniels you know, helping you. Yeah, carry yeah, yeah. One and, of the best ever. and Jerry Lynn as the referee. Yeah, that's right. Jerry Lynn's against so, referee. Yeah, you could definitely see how they could, the two of them yeah, together. Could they gave him 12 and a half minutes, uh, too. He, the match, it was a really good match. It went 12 and a half minutes. And you, you did see this? Yeah, one? this is the one match I watched. So they, you could tell they put a lot of heart into it. They did um, they did a table spot that was a lot of fun. Um, I can't remember all Steven did. He didn't do. Too much complicated wrestling. Uh, well, he, didn't he take like a? I think it was like some kind of suplex where he actually backflipped and landed. I don't quite remember. And I was pretty impressed. It, it didn't do, he did, did something along the coast. No. He did the coast to coast. Yeah, yeah. It that's was nice. Only, it was better than the highlight I saw was the coast to coast with no <laughs> trash can. He just yeah, kicked him in the face. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it was it was pretty. And then uh, and he went through a table from with an elbow drop. Yeah. It was, br oh, that was a brutal. Oh, no, he, he went just, just mad. He went for oh. an elbow drop. <laughs> <laughs> and just hit the table. Um, the best part about that match was um, Christopher Daniels had on his knee like a comic book cover of Hawkeye. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. I was like, what is that on his knee? And they finally showed it pretty close and I was like, it says Hawkeye. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> a little jab at Green Arrow. Yep. Um,. So, Daniels won with uh, the best moonsault ever. That's what he won with. <laughs> that's its name. That's so good. <laughs> no, no, that's just what he's saying. It is the best one. I mean, that's what he so calls the move, yeah. yeah. it's so good. That's what he won with. Um, that's about really all to that match. Afterwards, Daniels gave, um, gave him respect. Kind of like, I guess their little feud was over. Because, like, there was a storyline going into it on being the elite. Like, Yeah, Dan, what was it? So... It's kind of it's genius how they all tie this together. Hangman Page, um, I kayfabe or <laughs> killed uh, Joey Ryan on the show. We're doing all in. And um, Marcus is coming up. Wow. Yeah, he'll so he'll be able to help with this one. <laughs> but Hangman killed Joey Ryan on the show, and uh, Christopher Daniels because there was always a joke that Stephen Amell and Hangman Page look alike. So. Uh, so Christopher Daniels like uh, black. Uh, oh, he does. Yeah, <laughs> he like oh, wow. he accused. Uh, he kind of set up Stephen Amell for it. So like Stephen Amell got like arrested for killing uh, Joey Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so, <laughs> so that, that kind of set that match up. But at the end, like at the end of the match, Daniel gave him gave him the respect he deserved for putting on a hell of a match with him. That's cool. Yeah, I I, I just can't say. It. Any more good things about Stephen Amell? It's crazy that an actor just wanted to get in the ring and then he gets in the ring and he's doing moon salts and top rope elbows and cross bodies and stuff like that. I mean, with the, sh the him being a, basically essentially an action star, quote unquote, uh, well, he does it helps with training. I I understand. Like I've seen some stuff that he does a majority of his own stunts. You know, some stuff they won't let you do mm -hmm. as much as you want to do them. But, um... Oh, wow. It's it's just really cool that, like, he gets in there and he just had a 12-minute match against Christopher Daniels. And so, I didn't get to see it. I'm going to go home and watch it. But supposedly it was a very, very good match. Yeah, for, for, for what it was. Yeah. I mean, essentially for, you know, essentially being a greenhorn... Um, he actually did put a good yeah, showing on. Yeah. Oh yeah, legit. Damn. So, it's we have a... It's legit, that thing is... Oh, yeah, could you imagine, like, running it... We're looking at an ECW uh, championship title <laughs> the, right the last one with, like, right. the flamed eagle. The WWE yeah, yeah, ECW. Like, yeah, Dota is the one that... Like, like, nice. Beat up. That uh, nuts. That's cool to actually get to hold right, it. So, what are your three big things? <laughs> I think... Cause like, I, was so, I was really young when Matt Hardy won this thing. I was so happy. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you want to see it? Or? Yeah, I'll hold it. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. 
it weighs as much as Paul. Oh my god, it probably weighs <laughs> twice as much as Paul. Let's be honest here. There you go. The, ne the next match is, was a lot of fun, even though Marcus... Real realistic looking at no, it. So yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're, we're, on on the, uh, we're about to transition to the, the Fatal 4-Way Women's match. Yeah. Right. So that's Chelsea Green talking is, about is Zach Ryder's girlfriend. Six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're oh we're moving into Tessa Blanchard with Magnum oh, TA yeah. and Tully Blanchard, which is her dad, which is incredible. I think we were just talking about that before, and it's Magnum TA. It's like that. It's not a name that you really get to hear often or see, um, especially he's like one of the. He was like the next Golden Boy, and then he got hurt, and that was that. Yeah, what it was a car accident or something? He had some terrible accident, and that was. I think it was a car accident. It derailed his whole career. He's going to be the next like Hogan. Yeah. So, um, this match is Tessa Blanchard, uh, Chelsea Green, who is Zack Ryder's girlfriend. She was fantastic in this match. We'll get to that. Uh, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. She is... Adam, uh, Adam Cole's Adam, fiance, I think? Girlfriend or fiance. And then Madison Rain. Um, this, this was a lot of fun for a women's match. I mean, they were a little sloppy at times. Marcus made sure to pick that up. <laughs> sure. I called out one spot, and he gives me garbage for the whole match. Because one, it was a very difficult thing for a woman to pull off. You'd have to explain it, but oh wow, that all kind of like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. I have never easily. seen a female do that move I before, and I was that. amazed was by her doing slam. it. And he's like, "This oh, body." <laughs> she was selling. It wasn't meant. a body slam. It was. It was cool. It was, it was a running. Uh, it was a, the vaulting body press. Okay. Over the top rope. And she just made sure it was just No, a, she spun. That's why I was impressed by it. Well, I, I, like, didn't, I didn't know. The reason I called it, I didn't say something about it, is just, I didn't see the spin. She kind of botched the rope. She caught the top rope, so it made it a little sloppy. Oh, okay. So, I mean, it wasn't horrible. I mean, the no, match was great. It actually I happen to just call off. one botch. I happen well, to call botches when I see them. Yeah. So, what makes, what makes matches good is. But was the, it a botch or was it just sloppy? It was just it, a little sloppy. It happened, I mean, she left her foot just high enough, so it could have been just miscalculation. So it could have been a botch, it could have been sloppy. Make sure of both. It was still impressive. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I, I, I remember matches because of the personal spin on things. So that, right. it kind of, I mean... Hey, forever. If, if, yeah. if, it's just, if it's just a foot, that's a, I'd say it's slightly sloppy, but not even that. It's just no, uh, a, a miscalculation. <laughs> Like I said, I, I, didn't, I didn't trash the match. I yes, said the I, match was great. I am all about giving people a hard time. Yeah. Chelsea Green was fantastic. Uh, Zack Ryder's girlfriend. So apparently on the indie, she did this like zombie gimmick thing. Like she's like crazy bride or something well, like that. Oh, it was the is what she was called. On the impact, actually, she was the um, something mess. bride. And they, she got like left at the altar, so she went crazy. Yeah. So she with the indie league, she starts doing this this split personality where she's Chelsea Green and the the bride. And she actually came out in a half and half attire. And like oh, came with a veil. Smeared. And she like went she went hang, shake some like one of the wrestlers' hands before him, but she was like the other hand was like, like fighting the evil hand, the good hand. Okay. She was a lot of fun. Okay. Credit card. So minutes twenty minutes exactly. Sweet. So that was perfect timing for. So I just got to make a note that at 20 minutes I got to cut. But yes, back into what you were saying. Um, we were talking about... She did the half and half. Yeah. You were mentioning to him... She did a Canadian Destroyer. I wasn't sure if you guessed that. I don't know if it was her or not, but I someone did. I want to awesome. say it was Tessa. Oh, it was awesome. Jesus. Tessa Blanchard was the star of this match. She kind of came out, everyone raving about her. She, she was a lot of fun. You said she looked like China. I she, well, she, had a, she has a China physique. Yeah, she, she's... She, she could be the new age China because she has the, she has a manly physique. I mean, she's the kind time. of. Yeah. If you look at her, she's really stocky. She's tough. Yeah. I, the crowd was really. I mean, the crowd was into every match, but it was it was a lot of fun. Those those four women kicked butt. There ain't really much more to say other than Blanchard had a hammerlock DDT on Green to win the match. The other two girls like. A lot of people were talking about this because, like, they jumped in to stop it, but they were kind of, like, too good about when they come in the timing, so they came in, like, right at, like, the three. And so, like, people kind of thought that they, that they did break it up, but they didn't. So that was kind of, like, the weird ending of the match. That may have been, like, written in for a later match, you know. Look at this rewind. You didn't actually win. Yeah. Kind of thing. Once, one, like, homage that they did do in the match is Britt Baker is, I don't remember if she's his, Adam Cole's wife or fiancé or girlfriend. But she actually came out to his old indie music. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. I have tried. 
So, uh, I guess we'll wrap it. Y'all have any questions or anything to say about that? I know y'all don't really know those women. No, I just want to go to the next match so we can yeah, talk about say. how pretty Cody Rhodes' wife is. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever seen Brandy Rhodes. Yes. Yeah, you she's gorgeous. Oh my god, she's so pretty. So, yeah, have you seen so Brandy Rhodes before? I would have lost. Yeah. Oh, you, you should pull up her uh, Brandy Rhodes all in attire. That's Cody Actually, Rhodes' wife. Yeah, so. so. Oh, Good job, Casey. Cody. Yes. You should look up her all-in attire. Oh yeah, shining. Can I be an all in her attire? No. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so yep. So that, yeah. So, next match. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. Moving on. Oh, Jason. Jesus <laughs> crackers. I, which one of these? The uh, all -in which two attires? No, no, no. Those are the attires. All her in titties. Brandy Rhodes. Just so her titties. That's what I'm like. <laughs> Uh, that is like, but just titties. She dressed like this into the ring, like <laughs> nice. She's keeping on a tire. Don't make me. All right, while well, these, I mean, while well, they're looking up Brandy, <laughs> we Josh. You gotta watch this match. I really want your opinion on NWA World Championship match: Cody Rhodes versus Nick Aldis. Nick Aldis is the champion coming in. Um, they each come out to like uh, people surrounding them. Cody Rhodes. I can't remember all he had. He had diamonds. He had. Oh, I saw that he had diamond. Uh, Tommy Dreamer, Glacier, Glacier. yeah, and, um, and the most over person thing in the entire show, Pharaoh the dog. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, but did you see um, Nick Aldis came out with Jeff Jarrett, Sean Devari, Sam Shaw, and Tim Storm. Crazy. I had to Oh that's, my that's like a good. I mean, you know, that's remember like that, awesome right there. The just the entrance alone, like, I would have looked like it was see that. It, it had that just oh. big fight feel to it. <laughs> and the crowd was so into Cody, they wanted him to win this match so bad. Right. They, they just, I am down with the swirl. They just hated on, on Nick Aldis the entire match. Nick, it was it felt like a proper <laughs> face heel like thing. Nick Aldis was getting booed out of the building, and it just felt like yeah, it was a perfect one. I was like, oh, like you're saying, you enjoyed this match because it was an old school match. Yeah. It wasn't. It just felt like it was Dusty Rose versus somebody uh, you know, familiar with. Like it was a lot of his flair. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I'll be honest. I'm not. Uh, NWA. Yeah. yeah. NWA buff. Yeah. 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 NWA World Heavyweight Champion. But yeah, what? no, it just felt like an old school rival rivalry. Yeah, I I. I want to watch this match, but I want to. I want to. I think Jason could probably make this happen. We need to watch this match, and we need to. I want to watch it with either Paul or I want to watch it with Jason, somebody that respects old school, and then I want to watch it again with one of you guys <laughs> and talk about just because everybody's been talking. Like I saw it, and I saw on Facebook because I've been following the all in stuff. Everybody's I'm all in. I'm all in, and I was like. Okay, what's this all about? Because I, I follow indies, but I'm not anywhere to the thing that you guys are. And somebody, again, told me that earlier today. They were like, yeah, you should have watched Cody Rhodes. It was like watching his dad kind of thing. And I was like, okay, I'm going to have to watch it. I mean, apparently they did a similar ending to, ending to how his dad first won the title. Okay. I, I don't I don't know that much about it. Yeah, but top rope. I think it's like the... Uh, Dusty's elbow or something? Well, no, I mean, I guess it was like the outside stuff more oh, like Because like, he, oh, yeah. he just won with like a counter, like rolled him up kind of thing. Oh, nice. He sat down like a, a sunset counter. flip powerbomb yeah. or something like that. Nice. To get the win. Yeah, yeah. counter to sunset flip minutes. into the pin. Nice. Uh, Nick Aldis, kick, he kicked out of uh, a crossroads, to his finisher. Mm. And so when he kicked out, the crowd just popped because they were like, no. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Well... I saw like a lot of the reactions to him, and I guess like he was he was trending worldwide. Cody himself was trending worldwide after the match, so I was like, it's gotta be pretty freaking awesome. Well, yeah, too, and it's like the show is like his baby. Like we were talking about before, like how much he put into it, and then put himself sixth. Like he was like mid card. Like he Actually, had a, he was a third, yeah, third four. match in. Yeah, well, well six, I mean for total, total, there's yeah. eleven matches, and he was number six. Because yeah. it was a pre-show stuff. Because oh, yeah, it was, was a five-hour show. So yeah. they have 11 matches listed. He was dead center. And uh, for the NWA title, which is crazy. And, which uh, is one of my favorite titles yeah, of all yeah. time. The, the, the way me and Marcus ended up watching All In, this was the main event for us. This one we watched last. It, it was, I'm glad we watched it last. Yeah, uh, it, they gave it tw It was 22. It was the second longest match of the show. So um, here's the thing to discuss. I just... 
I don't know how old school it was, but Cody Rose went on to the outside, and like I said, the ref went out to the outside. Uh, what, what was the ref's name? Oh. Earl Hebner. Earl, Earl Hebner, Hebner yeah. right. That we keep forgetting to mention. <laughs> Earl Hebner was the fucking rat. So immediately he, he throws up the X. And Cody stayed outside on the floor for a while because you could tell kind of his head underneath his table. Like oh, oh, yeah, he was oh, jumping um, up. The knowledge that so jumping elbow. Just so yeah. you, oh, no, case, he was doing the moon flip and he reversed it. That's right, with the forearm. Well, in case people don't know, can you tell him what the X means when you when the ref throws <laughs> X? It's supposed to like be like... No, like that Stop someone's it. actually it's hurt. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's like the most the dreaded injury. thing that you... Don't want a referee to do. It's the it's the referee's white towel. Yeah, it's it's a we're gonna have to either stop this match or have emergency services waiting in the back kind of thing. So he he's sitting there on the floor, um, clearly about bleeding. But uh, DDP comes out to check on him, and uh, then Davari comes out with a towel, trying to trying to get the referee to call the match. And then DDP gets in the ring, gives a cutter to Davari. Nice. The crowd nice. pops big. What were you saying about the way he what? delivered the cutter? See, the way DDP delivers it, he doesn't jump or anything. He just grabs him and just falls. Yeah, just sat oh, down. Yeah. It, just, it just, just falls it's flat. It's perfect. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, for him, it's perfect because, remember, he was all that laid back. He, remember back in WCW, whenever people got in the ring, he was either, like, he was just either laid up against the ropes. Right, sitting in the corner. Sitting in the corner. Eventually, he evolved to laying across the top ropes. Do you remember that? Where he'd flip his legs up and he'd yeah, after lay he probably, there and wait for After him. he probably saw a video of Shawn Michaels doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, he would, uh, he was all about, well, like, he was one of the hardest working people, but his style looked lazy, if it makes any sense. And that's how, that's what looked awesome about him. That was my opinion on him. All right, so um, just so we can move it along, because we're we're uh, Hangman Page defeated Joey Janela. Oh. Uh, it was a twenty-minute Chicago street fight. So, so the ending of the match was nice. I showed is that him. the uh, yeah, the this Druids? Is, this is the ending of the match. Yeah, the yeah the that's Druids. The, pe- the penis Druids. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you see them. Yeah. So, Marcus, th- you're a big Joey Ryan fan. I'll let you take this one away. The match was really extreme. Um, God, that's insane. Yeah, he yeah, did. His finisher off the yeah, ladder. Yeah, he threw a table. table. God, yeah, threw a yeah. table. Earlier in the match, he like did a he like ran off the stage or no threw the guy off the stage into a table. Yeah, power bomb. Yeah, Joey Janela. They, they did a burning hammer onto a on a steel oh, on a, a ladder on the ladder on the outside. Burning hammer. There was a legit <laughs> yeah, barrel know. with crackle barrel. Burning hammer is like one of the oldest moves that I know. That's when I really started to notice Japanese wrestling. It was when we were watching the M Dog Twenty stuff. We'd also watch old Japanese wrestling, and you'd see burning hammers like. Those poor men. <laughs> they just, they're just like, dump them on their head. So this was a brutal, fun match. And then uh, Hangman Page gets the win. There was a lot of reference to the being, all, being the elite stuff, like uh, the boots that he used to like hit, uh, like had like no. Joey Ryan's blood on it. But he had a phone that he beat, killed Joey Ryan with, and that came back in the match. He tied it around the dude's neck after he like beat him on top of the ladder, and that's when he... Grabbed him the right of passage. So... After the match, take it away. <laughs> so what happened with this? these penises? Cavalcade of penis. So I think I walked in when you guys were discussing it. Like, what happened with them? Or? We didn't talk about... Oh, I mean, I talked about Joey Ryan getting killed yeah. to, to reference the Christopher Daniels. Um, okay. So, yeah, no, this is, we don't know anything about the Joey Ryan situation. So the backtrack to, like, the beginning of the... Where you guys were talking about the, during the Christopher Daniels thing. Right. Um, so the video package starts playing. Um, it's... Joey Ryan laying in the bed, covered in blood, like his dead body, like they showed on the on the B and Lee. All of a sudden, the camera pans down to his crotch area, and you and you start seeing him get a erection. <laughs> He's the penis wrestler. Yeah. He's the dick guy. He and does the like the dick flip, like when you grab his dick, he yeah. like eliminates you from the Royal Rumble. And stuff. Yeah, he'll, yeah, he <laughs> he hulks up his dick, and like if you grab it. There's like chains of yeah yeah oh so funny. yeah he's he's the master what? he's Why? the master of dong style yeah. like king of Shinsuke dong is style. the king of strong style he's the king of dong style yeah. you do when but, you grab his dick he throws you over the top rope when, yeah during Rumble's match just this just his gimmick he does it's moves with it it's like bionic yeah. and when he's not on TV he comes out to people the, haven't even heard of the word K baby <laughs> yeah he's the so king of sleaze but so yeah the video package then all like different things cut. All of a sudden, like an Undertaker esque scene happens on stage, and the dick truth. was it six or eight dicks just come walking on the stage? <laughs> guys in inflatable dick outfits, yeah. and they're like the druids. They line up on the entrance, right? Yeah. And then um, it's just the music, like the ominous music plays from it, and then like just 
'70s porn music start playing, and Joy Ryan comes out. Because if you ever seen Joey Ryan, he is literally the embodiment of a '70s porn star. Yeah, he's got like the slicked hair. He's all he's hairy chest. He's like a, I mean, in porn he's star. he looks like like a really he's like a buff Burt Reynolds. And I know he just died, but it just pops in my head. He's got the mustache. He's R. just Pino. yeah. Um, what? I know about that. Yeah, oh, Burt Reynolds today. died. Yeah. yeah he this just in. <laughs> 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 yeah, we waited for Marcus to get here. Well, I, mean, I haven't been on anything today. Yeah, so no. is he gonna like start taking the name like Dick Taker? No. <laughs> no. He just, it's just like I said, Dick's is his thing. He's gonna take you to Dick Flip City. But yeah, he gets yeah. in the ring, does his normal entrance stuff, or he uh, takes Hailing out a, from Dick he, Valley. <laughs> <laughs> he takes out a, a thing of baby oil, sprays it on his chest. Wipes on his arm and stuff, and then pulls his briefs out and pours it on some on his dick. Tosses the bottle, then takes his lollipop out of his mouth, puts it in his crotch, um, wrestles wrestles for a little bit, and when his signature move is after he dick flips you, he grabs you, puts the lollipop in your mouth. <laughs> That's the guy. And then super kicks you. Oh my yeah. god. Yes. All that true. baby oil and pubes. Terrible. Yes. Just look him up. He's uh, he he's uh, just a oh my god. <laughs> he's the embodiment. So we'd gross. have a conversation. He just looks like such a match happened. That ain't happening. I swear he must have worn. He has to wear something just to be in between. But it's just that's the it's wrestling. body made of yeah. him right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's a porn I think at this point you'll have to put a picture on the video. I'm gonna have to put him up, yeah, so everybody can see. If you haven't seen him, he's... oh man, that was so fun. I, we're, we were invested because we watched all the uh, Being the Elite videos, right. and so we were invested with it, and we were marks for Joey Ryan, but that was so fun. Yeah, we're marks for the pay per view. Yeah, I'll be honest. I guess, to make full I guess we can move on to what uh, Jason has been ready for the whole night. Can you Omega versus uh, oh my god, Zero. yep, against Pentagon. Uh, can you, so, to, to get off track, I mean, but still talk about Kenny Omega, his, what do you think about him, his contract being up in January? I mean, he, so, all these guys, they keep saying they're staying together. Their contract, I think, expires very soon, I think, no, beginning of November. Uh, the November. Young Bucks? And Cody Rhodes. Yeah, they all expire. It's like and all then, around the end of January. And then Kenny's is in J- January, I think, right after yeah, Wrestle Kingdom. Yep. Um, they keep saying they're going to stay together. Um, I think WWE are going to try to come after them, try to give that back down money they just got the $200 million for. They're going to try yeah. to come after yeah, them. Yeah, they but just got billions of dollars to be I, on Fox now. But I think yeah. this whole show is indicative of what they're going to do. They're going to start doing something with the NWA. They're going to bring back some sort of territory well, thing. They're going to run this. Because they're, gonna... they're running the Garden in January, aren't they? Is well, that's a honor in Japan. Correct. Right. Which but, is, I mean, which will be... this uh, That is separate from what they did because they just borrowed people from each federation. Right, but you're going to have Kenny Omega and those guys. Right. Because it's New Japan. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, H would be dumb to not go after these Oh, guys. they're, they're going to go after him. They're going to have to oh, back man. up a bunch of Brinks trucks. H, I think he could probably get Rhodes back in the back in the fold. So, oh, I don't want to cut you off, but they just did a, a podcast with Jericho, and Cody said to him, like, he's like, I know people keep saying, will you go back to WWE? He says, as a right, like, no, I don't, I wouldn't want to give up the creative. He was saying, like, if he goes back there, they will not be able to do what they want to do. I do Stardust for $20 million a year, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he won't but go back and do He makes more money now, though. He won't go back and do Stardust. Yeah, he makes more money. See, that's the biggest thing, is that's the reason I don't see them coming to WWE, is they'll lose creative and they'll lose merchandise. Yeah, but see, I think that with the merchandise, I don't think it would be such a, hit, a hurt because they will they won't take a hit because they're going to sell Dota E merch. And, and, and then you can do... Um, but I mean, why, probably, why pay a middleman we can just get all yourself? Yeah, but they're well, going to prob- probably... Because they're probably going to negotiate a lot better this time. being sold to WWE fans as well. Right, yeah. and the thing you got to think is they have a lot more... I have no idea what independent but, wrestling... Yeah. But remember how much leverage Cody Rhodes had before. Other than his namesake, he had none. Like, he really had a renaissance when he joined the Indies. Nobody was a big Cody Rhodes fan before sure. the Indies. It just, well, it just didn't... Was the only thing I ever said was like, I loved it when he did that Mr. Sinister... Yeah, <laughs> and, then he, and then he had the mustache, which was great, because it was such a good heel, like, you look like an idiot. It was, And that's the point. He was supposed Dash to look like Cody an idiot. Rhodes, was it? Yeah. yeah. It, it, I mean, they're right. When he was in WWE, he was just known as that guy that could get 
anything you threw at him over. Dusty Rhodes' son. Yeah. Yeah, he was but, Goldust's brother. Yeah. yeah. This is true. And but now he's now he's got I think he's got they have leverage. They're going to scoop him up cuz wouldn't you wouldn't it be amazing to get like a another chance at the invasion? I know it's like fantasy booking, but you could you I mean you have like the Do Bullet the Club. Right? Well, the Bullet Club is like if you get them, you have like 20 fucking members of the Bullet Club already. Yeah. yeah I mean, honestly, I'd be more like feel confident right about here. it if Vince McMahon wasn't around still cuz I feel like Triple H would want this. Like Triple H would love the idea of that invasion so much, but I just don't see it happening under Vince. Yeah, if Triple don't... H had full creative, I can see. Yeah, it. but see, it's I just don't better. think it, we just we just don't give him the man enough credit because look look how worried everybody is with AJ Styles, and he's been the champion for like four hundred fucking days now. I mean, he's gonna go on. He probably will beat CM Punk's record. I mean, there's a good chance if he keeps it till it for another. Been a year yet, not till Sir. Close when did Survivor Series. AJ St- yeah, which is it's September, so it's, it's uh, two more months. Yeah, that's only like it's close to three hundred. He's got yeah, exactly. So you give him a, what? CM Punk's is five something. No, it was four something. Yeah, so uh, so he keeps it till WrestleMania four, six, of next four, year, like that. which that, is a good uh, chance. Yeah, it was a, basically like Facebook page made it off that. Right? What I'm saying though is that yeah. look at AJ Styles. Look at the guys that they bring in. There's only right. very oh, few no, people. It's like sink or swim, which I kind of like. Sam don't I mean obviously don't bring him into NXT, uh, but. I, I think it's I think that he could handle it. Uh, Vince McMahon could handle. I don't, it. I only know one champion record, and that's Bruno San Martino. Oh, that's Jesus like Christ. Uh, yeah. Ten. It was like eight. ten. It was, it was something eight, combined. Seven, but he had two. No. It was like a ten and eight years. There was wow. yeah. two of them. And it. You want to watch some old school wrestling? Go watch it because that's just fun. Guy winning with a bear hug. Is <laughs> oh, the it's thing something. Ever. Um, but yeah. So the <clears throat> Kenny Omega match with the uh, Pentagon. Uh, they gave it, or what was it, it's almost 18 minutes long. Um, I didn't get to see, the, Kenny Omega went over. Mm-hmm. Did he do the one-winged angel? Yeah. Okay. Um, the reason I want to talk about it is because of what happens at the end when all the lights go out and then Pentagon gets up and starts beating the shit out of Kenny Omega and you're like, well, that's kind of weird. Why did a guy that just lost and got his ass beat just pop right up? Well, it's because it's Chris Jericho. He takes wait the mask a off. Where his tattoos go? And yeah, you're like, wait a, yeah, you look kind of stocky, and you ran up and did the Jericho forearm. So you're like, that's fucking go, Jericho. Put braider on him too. Pulls the, pulls the mask off, and it's Jericho, um, which is just so incredible. Jericho is like, he's like Cody Rhodes to the next level. Like Cody Rhodes is like, yeah, I can kind of go anywhere and do anything. Yeah, but Jericho can. Like Jericho's going to impact. Yeah. Uh, Jericho, he's the. The, I, the I, Intercontinental IWGP Intercontinental. Intercontinental Champion. So he's got a New Japan title. Um, mm-hmm. He's going to Impact. They're probably going to bring the title with him. And if I couldn't imagine they wouldn't let him show it on TV. Uh, but if they did, then it's, there, it's I think it's a loss for them. Um, just because of how hot New Japan is. You want yeah. it. And it's, and it's Jericho. I mean, Jericho is also still... He's still with WWE, I thought, or his contract just went up. Like he was um, still has like he's a. He's gonna be in the game though. Right, but I yeah, been he's got a like a partial. Is Tanae still their announcer? Who is Mike, Mike Tanae still their announcer? I honestly don't know. Yet. I love Mike uh, Tanae. Josh Matthews, I know, is one of them. I think. Um... Well, Don Callis. Well, because if it's Mike Tanae, he nonstop talks about New Japan Pro I, Wrestling. I like Mike Tanae though because he was like the to me he was like the godfather of uh, like rest like a. Uh, like luchador commentary yes. like he knew all the like everybody knows that a hurricane ron is and, and head scissors and all right. that shit but he would say those and you're like the fuck did yeah, he just break say out the, that's a tope con hilo like, what <laughs> this is america he just stopped speaking english for a second <laughs> nah, but I, don't, I think josh matthews actually took Tanae's spot okay so now yeah i think it's it's, it's josh matthews and i think don Callis as well i believe don Callis is doing yeah that. don Callis does a lot because it was of stuff. um josh matthews and um what's his name oh, well the only reason i asked was really because nice. Tanae is like New Japan Pro Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling. That's, yeah. just, uh, that's just what he does. And it, I would say if he was still announcing, yes, they would show the title on the thing because he, every show he says in New Japan at least twice. So, well, well Don Callis does both. He, he does yeah. commentate. Yeah, he's, he, and then he's got a podcast with Lance Storm. And then he's also like really, really good friends with Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho. Um, there, it's it's crazy how. Um, but how was the match though? As a, I mean, 
it, it was a lot of fun. Um, just traditional Kenny Omega match. Uh, Strong, hard hitting, fast. Because even even though Penta's is a a stocky guy, he he can move. move. Oh yeah. Yeah. And his look, he's just got an incredible look. So what Jericho did was Jericho did a show. He did a concert. No, no, no. He no, did this. No, no, he did a con- one concert no. first. He, he did no, a he concert. Flew, and then he flew to another concert. He did, uh, he did a concert, know took an hour concert. and a half flight, came into the match, had all the makeup on, took another flight with all the makeup on, and then did a second show, like a rock show. He did two rock shows and a wrestling show in one day, and he had the makeup on for the second rock show. Jeez. <laughs> You're like... And this guy's in his 40s, and it just, yeah, and it, close it's yeah. fucking, like, he's, like, the last, he's one of the last, like, real, like, rock stars. Like, he, when you hear about the shit that he does, or if you've read any of his books, his, his, he's, he's oh, fucking he still drinks for the best, he's, though. Right, and he's, like, a good Christian guy, too. Like, he talks about God and his family and blah, 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 but then you hear about his life, you're like, what? Like, those, <laughs> those don't go... Those don't go together. Like I mean, you're that's typical Christian, but we won't go together. Right, right. So, <laughs> quick side note. Kind of go backtrack a little bit. I'm not sure if it was mentioned during the Daniels Mill match. The referee for the match was actually oh. Jerry Lynn. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure that was oh, talked about. Oh, yeah. We, forgot yep. to th- we mentioned it before we started recording. but then we- uh, Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was talked about or not. Um, so we have, we have we uh, have Okada and, and Marty Scroll, which is... Uh, this was apparently the one that went over. It went 26 minutes. It was the Martin, longest Martin, match yeah. on the card. Yeah, the match was originally, I think, was only supposed to be like 15. Yeah, some, and they some took some yeah it was like 12. They, they think they said they went 12 over, so 11 or 12 <laughs> minutes over, which caused the main event to be less than... Cut in half. Yeah, the main event was the Six second man. shortest match of the night. Hey, they, got, they still got all their spots in, though. <laughs> That's what I heard. Um, they all their gimmicks and all stuff. Uh, yeah. It was... The Golden Elite, which is the Young Bucks and Kota Ibushi. My favorite wrestler in the world. Kota Ibushi. Oh, he's so, he's good. so good. He took a burning hammer last year um, from, uh, what's his name, uh, Spanky, in the tournament. The Cruiserweight Classic. Uh, Brian Kendrick. Uh, Brian Kendrick. He took yeah, a burning uh, hammer from him, and I'm like, oh, he just Spanky's. he just killed him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and to like, go back and was like, you guys who's are showing Spanky? Your age. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what, what's Brian that Kendrick. move he did that I keep raving about? It's just, it's oh, like, it's same. a standing moonsault. Or no, yeah, standing moonsault. But when he lands, he doesn't land on his stomach. He lands with both knees onto their stomach. Oh, my oh, God. I remember when, a backflip uh, knee drop. Remember when Double Rob did that? Yeah. I had, Rob did that to Dale one time. My friend Rob did that. To, and it was the sound was horrifying. <laughs> and he sticks her for, like, good oh, he, mm, for, mm, like okay. 10 seconds just to make sure it stays in. Uh, Rob it, did a front flip and then stood on my face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Out of the ring. Out of the ring. He did a tope he con hilo, and then Paul looked up. And he, was he, supposed to do, he was supposed to do a shooting star. So I get real close underneath him so I can catch him. And he just goes forward, and I'm like, no, no. <laughs> and I took, like, one step back, and, and he, he just double stomped Paul's double face. my face. It was incredible. Oh. You didn't break your nose or anything. No, no. He weighed, like, nothing. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was super athletic, yeah, but he was, nothing. like, right. Yeah, <laughs> he was, like, super athletic, but he was, like, 115 pounds. I don't um, care. A phone. Uh, I'm laying in bed and my phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you should see. I'll, I'll bring it in because I have it on DVD. Um, yeah. I have all of our old backyard stuff on DVD. But he let me do a lot of devastating moves to him in that match. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, he was he was really good for it. Was it was even. Oh, yeah. Oh, because was he was even. so, like, he was lanky. He was, like, my height, but, like, 60 pounds lighter than me. And uh, you could just whip him around. And he was super athletic. So, it, um, like, he did karate and everything. So, he just, you just fold him up. So, that's an IV or podcast idea do a live reaction to one of your old tapes oh my god we <laughs> can watch some old oh, oh no. we have to. yeah we have to have a cap on that some of it's like i don't i, I, don't, I think i'm gonna delete it i'm gonna bring it in here and clean the disc because i can't use it anymore <laughs> so ray mysterio came out as dressed as wolverine which is insane oh, yeah was... because the golden league they fought ray mysterio uh ray phoenix and bandito which i'm not familiar he's, with. he's really damn good none, he... none of us knew who he was either but now the world knows his name he yeah. was he was great yeah, so they gave them, they had 11 minutes, because they had to end the show. Um, they had they got out with, like, two seconds left, I think it Three was. Three seconds, I think it was. Yeah, they said they barely got out, and then they didn't even get to do the speech, but they did it for a crowd at the end of the show to say how they're happy about, you know, everything. That's awesome. Yeah. I saw the picture of Ray, and I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that Wolverine costume is so cool. Oh, man, he he's, he's always done things like that. I mean, the very yeah. first time I saw him, he was dressed up as Spider-Man. Yeah. 
I, uh, you remember his Joker outfit? Uh, it was like Mania or something. Mania like. Rumble. No, yeah, I, don't, I don't even remember the Joker yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he came out as Joker. Joker, he done like Spartan. Uh, did other, he yeah. did Daredevil when the Daredevil movie came out. Yeah. He looked way better as Daredevil than they, Daredevil looked in the movie. <laughs> I, yeah. I actually was watching the uh, Monday Night Wars uh, documentary oh. on the network. And um, they had, I was watching the Cruiserweight one, and I saw a picture of yeah. Mysterio, and I'm like, ooh, he's that was pre- definitely 20 years older now. <laughs> that, was, that was, well, that was pre WWE bulk, when they're like, you gotta weigh 300 yeah. pounds. He's like, but I'm 5 foot 2! So they're like, 300 pounds! But no, the first time I saw him, he was dressed as the Phantom. Yeah, that was the oh very my first god, match that outfit was, was that. awful. And that was like, that was like I'm gonna start watching wrestling bodies. again. He'd probably love it because it's purple. Full purple, dude. Full. We're, I think we were talking about this last week. Yeah, someone mentioned it. Yeah, I we did. were talking about uh, Splash Mountain. <laughs> I mentioned Mountain. it last week. Yeah. yeah, Splash Mountain. It was when uh, when he was fighting Psychosis, which was the best wrestling I, in WCW. Their cruiserweight was all. I figured I, I better out. correct it because I might have said that it was the first time I saw him last mm-hmm. week too. So um, <laughs> so for you guys that watched the whole thing, what do you what did you think of the show as a whole? It was a solid first timer pay per view. I would give it. I mean. I'd get a five out of five, honestly. I mean, there's yeah, there's little technical things, but so here's the thing. I I didn't get to watch a lot of the old stuff of like that you guys can talk about. Like I was there for, I was saw, or something that was historical and that we still talk about twenty years later. Right. This indie show we are going to talk about twenty to thirty years later. Yeah, it's going is, to be impactful. Like it. it is important. And it just felt like it. The entire show. Yeah, and those wrestlers, their heart and passion they put into it showed. The wrestling fans' heart and passion they put into it showed. Everything about it just came together. It was like perfect storytelling. It was perfect giving the fans what they want. And, like, it just felt right. And it just made me, like, love wrestling even more. Like, just seeing all those little things. I, I loved, by the way, I loved how WWE responded by letting the Shield get the shit kicked out. <laughs> the next yeah. show. <laughs> this will teach you not to get us ratings. But you know one of the best parts about this show doing so well is that it had no TV. Like, yeah, there right. was no cable presence, yeah. no commercials. Like, you you had zero TV advertisement. You got streaming service, which we all see streaming and cable. It's like, streaming is different. You know what I mean? You yeah. can, you, it's not as accessible. With, this, with cable, it's just always been there. It's always like, been TV. Yeah, there um, was, yeah, the only route for it. But, but that's what I'm saying, though, yeah. and how well it did. It was yeah. less than 30 minutes, they sold 10,000 tickets. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot, way more people go without cable nowadays and just than do with. streaming services. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. but I'm saying, so, though. I mean, you, this is like, this is probably like the dawning of that. I mean, even, really, even WWE doesn't even use pay per view anymore, right? No, no all their stuff is stream. Yeah. If you yeah. get if you get the network, you have the pay per view. Yeah. There's no more yeah. monthly subscription. I mean, well, so you pay for the subscription. It's like Netflix, and then every like month, real, Netflix is like, here's like a new Real thing. quick, just you know, like moving from wrestling. I think WWE kind of started that once they saw Netflix's capability of app, you know, on demand content. And you've got companies like MLB and FIFA all going, maybe this might be a thing. Yeah, ESPN and everybody. Yeah, they're they're like, we're just going to pull it and keep all. All of our ad revenue for ourselves. Yeah, why not? No, no sharing it with the provider. No, right. no. Why, yeah, why? Why do you, you don't need like Comcast and stuff like that? You don't need cable. You run your own thing, and then it would like with the NFL Network. Oh, I want to go back and watch the 2001 Patriots win this very first Super Bowl. Well, yeah. guess what? You can't. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, oh, and then if you're watching football, you just watch it on the network. Oh, I want to watch. Because, like, that's the, one of the worst things about being a football fan is that even to this day, I have to own, if I own cable or anything, if I am not in the service area for my team, they're not on TV. Yeah, if the Patri- three games you can watch. If Patriots don't play the Jacksonville, Tampa, or Miami, I don't get to watch that game. Or that really rare game that... It's like a Sunday night or mm-hmm. Monday night if I get the... In, oh. in, but I'm saying, like, and I'm lucky because I have a team that's generally on those time slots, so I can watch them. But I'm saying, like, if you're a fan of a team that doesn't do so great every year, you're kind of screwed. You're, mm. you're stuck in that. So you're right. So you're Why saying not? if you're a Cleveland Browns fan, I didn't you want never to. get to see it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can you're pay not. for the NFL package, but you know. from right, what you I can hear, pay for the package. A, lot of, a lot of people have problems with it. Like, well, and you're also paying $300 every year for that. Like, my, you can get, like, 
you, like with DirecTV, you can get savings. My dad would do it every year, but still, he's paying one hundred fifty dollars for the year mm-hmm. to well, watch one thing any they, team. Oh, I don't want to get into football, but real quick, yay one, sports ball, yay <laughs> sports ball. They they've kind of narrowed that down because they're testing it. I think they started last year and they're doing it again this year. They're doing the college students package, which is the exact same thing you get. It's right. just online. You can get it on either a gaming system or on a computer. And it's twenty five dollars a month for four months. Right, that's not a bad. Deal. That's not a bad deal, and you get every game. Right, and I think it's going to revert, especially with their lack in ratings. They're going to see you know companies like WWE, companies like Netflix, companies like Hulu doing really well with nineteen ninety nine subscriptions, and they're going to go. I'll take. Nineteen ninety nine for the whole year instead of forty dollars over four months, right? Kind of thing. Um, that may yeah. be one of those things that you see with professional sports. That, frankly, WWE with sports led the way. Like yeah. they did it. Uh, they they decided we're going to pull all our stuff off of these things, except for you know the weekly live programming. Right. Yeah. But, but there's, they're going to... But those sports have to realize then that they're putting all of their, or a lot of their revenue into the hands of the people that are watching. Yes. Which is very dangerous because <laughs> as to go back to WWE, uh, the Daniel Bryan Royal Rumble debacle where they hashtag canceled WWE was trending worldwide. Yeah. Like they just started this service and then everybody's like, oh, you don't want to give us what you want? Well, fuck you. But the good thing about wrestling fans is that they're like, man, I'm not watching wrestling again until yeah. next week. Like, that's <laughs> their thing. Yeah. This is dumb and I hate it. I guess I'll watch Raw, though. And but. then maybe just next week. And yeah. then I'll watch SmackDown and then 205 Live and NXT. But that's it. <laughs> but see, with the network as well, they did lead it off because New Japan did follow suit. They actually yep. do have their own streaming service. New right. Japan I think there's like $10 as well. New Japan World, yeah. Yep. yeah. And then uh, Ring of Honor, like two months ago, released theirs, the Honor Club. Yep. Now theirs is not as fancy because yeah. it's just, they don't have the budget. Right. I mean, they have the ten dollars a month. You get half off the pay per views and fifteen. You get a discount on the store. Or they have the hundred dollar per year, same thing. Or they have a VIP, a hundred and twenty dollars. You get all an annual pass, and you get all pay per views and everything. Yeah. Free. Well, this is that's that's gotta be where all these companies gotta go. That's where I want to go because. WWE's yeah. like, we were doing $60 pay-per-views a month, or $45 pay-per-views a month, and they were keeping a $9 of it, maybe, because they had to share it with you know, the pay-per-view company, they had to share it with all their ad services, they had to do pay for the show, and pay for the... So, okay, we're just going to do $10 a month, cut all those people out, we're going to own all the equipment, and we're going to put it on there ourselves. Well, then, too, you got to think about all their original content that they also can provide. Oh, They're right. not just watching wrestling. Like, they That's have think- so... Like, Table for Three, I love that show. Mm-hmm. As much as I don't like JBL, his... When he did his uh, Legend series or whatever, yeah, JBL Legend is a JBL. hell of an interviewer. He's mm-hmm. so freaking good. And he's yeah, not like, afraid. He'll talk about anything. Right, too. but then the people go with, like, he did one with Ron Simmons, with Farouk, and it was so good. Mm-hmm. Um, you have, like, Camp WWE. They have Storytime. They have yeah. Edge and Christian's uh, show is coming back yeah, for another season. season. Um, you have, you just have so much just original. You have NXT, and you have uh, so right much. Along. Right, right along. You have so much lives. stuff that's just original content. And then... You also have network TV because there's shows like uh, uh, what's Total the Bellas Total on Bellas there. and yeah. Total you know um, Total Bellas is on E you know Total, yeah, Divas on yeah they're Miz and, and it's on or whatever yeah and that's on it's in I'm not E sure it's they're on get they're, on the network but maybe I say right but also saying they also have things outside they're still venturing outside of the network I can it's not just exclusive two starts I can see them putting on the network mm-hmm. to people what I would love for them to do it's good for them to get the their because SmackDown next year will be going to uh, Fox. Is it next year? I thought it was later this year. Uh, no, 2019. it's next year. 2019. Uh, okay. So they're going to be going on to Fox, which is just going to... Yeah, yeah, it's going to just blow up. Wrestling You're going to get on network TV again. And and that's... Right. You haven't yeah, seen that huge. in 20 it's plus a years. It's $200 million thing. So yeah, it's that's, like, that's, that's why it was CW. Or UPN. Well, there's a reason. Yeah, there. yeah, but you can't really. I mean, UPN. I mean, don't look at it. If you look at the Nielsen ratings, there's a reason that there's a completely separate bracket 
for network TV versus cable TV. Right. right. Because, oh, we got a 6.5 on cable? Okay, we're going to sit over here on network with our 13.5. Right. When literally and, anybody in the world, you know, you get an antenna and you're watching TV. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's going to be huge for WWE to come in and make a splash. Right. You have to. Right off the bat, you're going to have to. And then you have, like we talked about, ROH and New Japan. They sold out Madison Square Garden, which is just... For April next year? Yep. Which is... G1 Supercard. Insane. They picked up... Like a day or two before. And I love they, that. I yeah, love it's that right point. by WrestleMania. In it's WrestleMania... Usually, yeah, their Supercard... Ring of Honor Supercard usually the day before. So Where's like, WrestleMania next takeover? year? Takeover? Uh, the Barclays Center. No. I, yes. Oh, no, 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 that's no the they're doing after. the... They're doing the New Jersey though. They're uh, doing it's it in Jersey. I'll, I'll right. I'm, I'm thinking SummerSlam next year. Right. Mind. So they're doing it. I think Takeover and the Raw after will be in. The right. Place. But they're doing a Madison Square Garden show at the around the exact same time. On, on the same time as Takeover. Right. Same as Takeover, which that's gonna be a battle because Takeover is usually the the better show. The two during the big. Yeah, reunion. but you know we get to watch. We get we get like. Be a, long a war again, us. though. But you get to watch two Saturday sh- wrestling shows, and you have to legitimately decide. You're not just gonna be like, "I'm obviously gonna watch Takeover." You're like, "But yeah. am I?" Because you're gonna watch an ROH New Japan show at Madison Square Garden, so they're gonna do everything. Yeah, oh, they're, they're, uh, gonna, they're gonna put it all out there. But they're also gonna be competing for talent too, because you gotta think every show for WrestleMania week is like five star shows like you just go to indie yeah. shows and literally everybody in the world gathers there and all you do it's a week of wrestling it's just yeah. what it's become it's not just Wrestlemania That's it was. it's wrestling week like it's, last year cool in Orlando be, right. I, mean, I went to like four shows in two days right but yeah. we were looking up the schedule and there was like one day that had like 12 separate wrestling shows going yeah. on it's because WWE's bringing in this stuff now you gotta think on Saturday there's another WrestleMania. I mean, you have your NXT, but you also have another WrestleMania-style thing where you're going to have people competing for time and what you really want to watch. And it's I'd love to see like if Cody and them are still doing it. I'd love to see them reenact the DX, bringing the war. <laughs> they did. Actually, they did. They, the they did. No, but I mean that weekend. Oh, what I'm saying, they kind of did something like that already with the Young Bucks. Yeah. Yeah, it was after like they lost Jimmy Jacobs. Or, they well, it was right Jimmy before. Jacob. That's what got Jimmy Jacobs fired. Yeah, because he took a picture, picture with them. Yeah, yeah, because, because they invaded a WWE show. Well, what pissed them off was uh, one of the guys in the crowd said that uh, like they papered it because they gave him a ticket. And Cody, and so Cody like talked about it on his thing because he thought it was hilarious. That they, it's like, look, they're papering their their audience. <laughs> and so, and that really pissed them off. So what I think is that we're, we're lucky to have a time like this because we get, I think we're going to, we might get to see like a, Crossover. Well, no, like maybe we'll get like another. We'll get to see another age. huge company get well, we'll bought get another, out we, by uh, WWE. But we might sure. get another golden age. Like the independent scene, I say this all the time, is the new territories. Like, yeah, you're right. it's you have because you, they're all over. Because you can watch indie shows. Like when Paul and I did it 15 years ago, it was definitely a totally different <laughs> scene. It's not yeah. like all this. Everything is like there. Are, obviously, there are going to be your lower end indies, but like. All this like glitz and glamour. Oh, the indie guys are Cody Rhodes. I'm like, fuck, he's an indie guy. Like the indie guys that we used to wrestle with were like 36 year old fat dumpy dudes that like we're like, okay, we're gonna blow these old guys out of the water. Now after wrestling on an independent show and fucking Kenny Omega's there, you're like, okay, this is kind of, it's it's crazy like how much talent that there is that it's just everywhere and you have companies like ROH and you have companies like New Japan. As much as big New, New Japan is, they're still. I mean, WWE is still. And now it is. You never know where Jericho's gonna show up. <laughs> it's the best part. Is Jericho will literally Jericho will literally wrestle in any like we probably could have got him. That's Saturday. He's we could have got him at the KK. <laughs> every single show that's going on that day, Jericho's gonna be at every one of them. Yep, Jericho's <laughs> gonna be yep. awesome. He is. He's gonna wrestle at all this shit. He'll be at NXT and that other show at the same time. He never <laughs> says no. He's like, I'm gonna make it to everything that I'm asked to go to. Yeah. So this pretty much just turned into an all-in show. Um, we didn't get to. Is, I mean, is there anything else we want to talk about? Anything anybody has in any um, anything wrestling? I, I just I just realized all the way through the show how much these two are missing out on the amazingness that is a Dusty Rhodes title match, and I'm gonna have to show it to them. Right. <laughs> You're gonna watch Dusty, whether you like it or not. Kill. We can do that next. We'll, You're we'll gonna re- get dusted. We we'll review it. Yeah, that's what we should do. So what we need to start doing is since you guys are more the new school. Um, which there's nothing wrong with that because I watch a lot of it too. 
Um, that's what got me back into it was the Shinsuke and um, uh, Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn. Oh. That match, when I saw that match, I'm like, oh, well, wrestling is back. Cool. <laughs> uh, the Dark Ages are definitely over. And then, uh, and then match, I... You probably enjoy the cesaro Sami Zayn match. And the, yeah, which I've been meaning to watch. And then I got to watch the triple threat match with uh, Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, and uh, Charlotte at that WrestleMania. Because that's when I got back into you it. You watched so. Bailey and Sasha? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gone back and watched that. Um, but what we should do is we should start giving each other, like, matches or... <laughs> Yeah, watch a match homework from time. yeah we should do it because like you guys can put us you on guys stuff get homework we don't time on us to watch a match from the indies and or we'll like anything time like you hey, guys to watch an old school like match. watch a like i haven't really watched any okada stuff so yeah. i've been wanting to so if you have a well, really good okada match tell well, me I mean, this one's easy for you guys watch all in <laughs> it's fair. Yeah, but I want to have something to talk about the next time that right. we come in. Just, just watch the three. Dominion, I guess I would say. Giving you more than one. Yeah, Dominion would be a great, great one. But you probably should, I want you to start Wrestle Kingdom 11, King Omega versus uh, Kazucho Okada for the... Okay, so last year? That's yeah. last year's one, right? I mean, not the one. past year, but yeah. the one before. Right, okay. But you have um, to watch what? those rematches. You just have to. Okay. As a wrestling fan going forward, you have to watch those matches. And I'm trying to think of anything we should give them. Uh, classic match? Yeah. Um, uh, I just, I Rey Mysterio Jr. versus Psychosis Bash at the Beach. 1996. Beach. Uh, I haven't seen that one, but... Well, I haven't. Um, well, we'll go further for <laughs> you. Can, can, can I say Yeah, go. Uh, go watch um, uh, The Four Horsemen versus... Uh, Are you going to go for a War Games match? Yes. You love war games. <laughs> I love oh, I, one of my favorites. I knew, right? When he said four horsemen. Four horsemen, but war it's games. the um, led by Arn Anderson. Flair wasn't in the match. Um, versus, uh, it was Stunning Steve. Um, oh, God. What was their names? They were led by Paulie Dangerously. Paul Heyman. Yeah, I knew him. <laughs> um, I can't, I can't remember what War Games it was. I think it was like War Games 94 or something like that. Oh, my God. And it was, um, it's on the network. It's amazing. It's just blood everywhere and these old Steve school Austin's wrestling. match? Yes. So, uh, that makes it, so I, I, mean, I may know. Yeah, and then you can also, there's another one that they did where it was, um, it was the Four Horsemen versus, uh, what the hell was the name? The Power Trip or something? It was yeah. the Super Powers. Super Powers. So the Super Powers. It was Dusty Rhodes, the Road Warriors, and Nikita Koloff. Mm-hmm. Was that not a War Games match? Or? Yeah, it's yeah. a War Games. But it's Ric Flair, Lex Luger, Arn Anderson, and Tully Blanchard versus Dusty Rhodes, the Ro- Road Warriors, and Nikita Koloff. It should be from 81. It's a long. It's NWA Great American Bash. Or NWA Great American Bash. So it was before it was WCW. Hmm. It's, it's uh, actually on the network. I think they show it as WCW's Great American Bash, though. So, but that's so Dusty Rhodes. some old burly men beat the shit out of each other. All right. And then I watched some Japanese burly men beat the shit out of each other. Because I know about Okada. I know a little bit about... Japanese wrestling has not changed much since we watched it 20 years ago. No, really. They, uh, it's a little more flashy, but they just still just watch, murder each you other. Watch some old like dragon suplexes and shit like that. And you're just like, these. And they were like big men. guys. Yeah, these poor But they men. weren't like how they are now, which are still bigger guys. But like you have like some like Kenny Omega sized guys. But you had like these just big burly dudes that are like, okay, well, suplex on your head. Oh, Every yeah. single one yeah. of their moves are on there. Like, scoop slam on your head. Why? Looks like we're last talking like last week. Our last podcast oh. about that Snapdragon. Yeah. yeah. It just, Kenny just goes, yeah. That's like, nuts. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Caleb just Snapdragon suplex Marcus, so. Marcus will not be joining us for the rest of the <laughs> He's show. dead. Here. All right, well, I think that's going to be it, though. Unless anybody's got anything else? Nope. All right, so we all have our homework to do. Uh, uh, I'm Jason. Caleb. Marcus. Josh. I'm Paul. Uh, This has been ShoeCast. Thank you, guys. We'll talk to you later.